Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. So this week's video is going to be slightly different in that you're not going to be following me around um, per se, but I am going to show some segments of a trip that I had just recently with a friend up in the Lake District. Now, we spent three, three days in the Lake District in total, and it was purely photography based. So it was a really great weekend. It was very, very relaxing and really enjoyable. And it was nice just to put the video camera down for once and just focus on my own photography. But there were three occasions, um, three locations where I just felt that the images were so nice that it were a shame not to not to sort of incorporate that into a bit, bit of a video. And I'm piecing that video together um, now for you to see some of the things that, that went on during that weekend. So we started the weekend off at um, a little spot between Rydalwater and Grasmere and there's a patch of river that runs between the two called the River Rothay. Now we'd spent a bit of time there looking at various compositions. We headed up into some, some um, trees. We, we actually went to photograph bluebells but we were a little bit too late. Most of them had gone over. But as we headed up into the higher ground we did find some bluebells and we were stood around just having a bit of a chat and discussing how compositions are so easily missed in woodlands and what's the best um, approach to finding the, the complicated um, compositions. And it was at that point that I just happened to glance over to one side and see there was a beautiful oak tree just, just sort of growing out of this rocky knoll and, and I said to my friend David, I'm going to have to go up there, I'm going to have to have a look at this because it looks like an interesting tree and if there's a nice background it will, it will potentially make for a good composition. So off I went and I'll now pass you to the video where you can see exactly what happened. So I've just been down at the bottom of here looking at the, uh, the fallen tree just at the bottom there and what attracted me as I turned round was if you just look, if I just spin this round and you just see where my tripod is there. The tree here that's on this rocky knoll really caught my eye from down at the bottom. So I came up to investigate it, had a walk up, and as luck would have it, just at that moment in time, the sun came out. And you can just see in the mid-ground here, there's these bluebells, and the light was catching those bluebells. And I quickly framed up a phone shot that looked something along the lines of that. And as you can see now, even with that, it looks really quite nice. What I decided in the end, because of the aspect ratio of my camera, that this beach on the left hand side here is quite young and not overly characterful and I just knew that with my aspect ratio of my camera that that part would crop out and I could just move the camera ever so slightly to the left and just focus on that and that as my background. Bluebells is the mid ground and of course this lovely tree on this rocky knoll in the foreground and uh, I did have to wait quite a while probably about 20 minutes or so for the sun to come back out the sun's just rising over to my right hand side there and I, I felt that the light on those bluebells in the mid-ground was really important and fundamental to the shot when the light did come out I underexposed quite uh, quite significantly just to focus the the exposure on that spot so that everything else around it could be could be made much darker and more moody as a result of that but overall quite a nice shot so I'll just show you quickly on the back of the camera what I took so this is the shot before the sunlight and then as you can see if I move forward that's the shot with the sunlight I've got a few variations of this I'm not overly keen um, looking at it on the back of the LCD of the light that's on the foreground here what I was really after is just this band as I've just said, um, running through the middle, but when I get it on the PC, I might actually like that. Plus I can tone down the bits that I feel are a little bit too bright. So I'll put that on now.
So I hope you like that image. Now I have to say that as the weekend progressed, the images, to my mind, just got better and better. Now whether that was a case of getting your eye in and just, just getting more into the photography and, and stepping away from the normal everyday um, goings on of the week, um, but I certainly started to see more as the weekend went on and of course the conditions got better but you'll see more of that in just a second. So typically with the Lake District one of the annoyances if, if I call it that and I suppose you've got to, the, the park has got to pay for itself in some ways the, the cost of the car parks and this particular one um, was quite expensive so we was on our way back to the vehicle in a bit of a rush and, and I spotted something at the corner of my eye as we were walking along the um, the footpath and I passed it first of all and took a quick snap with the phone and then on the way back to the to the van I said to said to David I've just got to go back and film that because it's so nice it's a shame not to include it in in the video so off I went and I actually didn't manage to film it with with my proper video camera and I'm filming this next section with my phone and it was just really to show you um, how I approached um, this this particular composition, what it was about it that caught my eye, and then uh, I'll show you the composition with the phone before putting it on with the final edits that I took with my main camera. So I'll pass you over now. So just walking along this footpath, just spending a bit of time before we needed to go back to the car park, we was having a walk along here to see what we could find along the river off to the right hand side, and that patch of lighter green really caught my eye. And um, I wasn't really here this weekend to look at close-up stuff, but I can't resist it. These things really jump out at me. Now, this is a obviously a, a group of ferns, but the ferns that I don't recognise immediately, and ferns can be quite complicated to identify, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna guess at the type it is now, but I will put it on screen hopefully when I when I can get the books out and look at it in more detail. But you can just see how beautifully pristine the whole group is and um, what I did was to just get the camera over the top and look down now, I don't know whether you can spot it but there is just one that really stands out and it's this one here see the white balance on the camera just changed as I put my hand over so what I did was I've just gone a little bit closer angle the camera ever so slightly and you can now see that's a beautiful composition coming into view now don't forget this is on my phone, uh, the aspect ratio is not the same as my camera but uh, very easy composition but with my camera what I did I was I pulled out ever so slightly so I didn't need to do a focus stack by pulling out at f19 I get much more depth of field than what I would if I went in to the actual composition which is there and, uh, and then I would need to start focus stacking but I really love that, that fern in the middle for some reason is lighter than all the others and it just begs to be photographed. So I'll put that shot on now. So that turned out really well. It was probably, for me, it was one of those typical um, intimate scenes that I really, really enjoy taking. It wasn't what I was there for over the weekend, but like I said in the film, I just couldn't resist it. And as far as images getting better as the weekend progressed, I do think that that one is slightly better than the earlier one that you just saw a couple of, a couple of minutes ago. Um, those of you that really enjoy the, the broader landscape scene will probably disagree and probably enjoy that more than the ferns but um, I just felt that it was so clean the ferns that it was it was hard to fault there was nothing about it that I didn't like whereas the landscape shot of the woodland before it um, there were things I probably would have changed about it but um, nonetheless uh, a nice image but 
for me the ferns trumps it all day long it's just such a lovely clean tight composition and works in every sense and the way that that fern in the middle just stood out amongst all the rest it was like a gift from nature it really was so um, that was the end of that day we then went on to the Saturday and we headed up to um, to Borrowdale and uh, we camped in the camper vans at Borrowdale and headed down into uh, to the to the lake surrounding Derwent Water in the morning and to an open area of heath that uh, that resides in that area and lo and behold when we got through the woodland and got, entered into the heath unbelievable the mist was just absolutely beautiful it wasn't forecast it wasn't what we were expecting um, but it was such a treat and we ran around like <laughs> like you won't believe just just trying to find compositions we got nothing planned at all it was all uh, on the hoof and just trying to find whatever we could now i was determined not to just shoot anything because it was misty because what you tend to find in those conditions is that more subjects can look really nice and, and be elevated in their quality just by having that mist but i was determined to find something that um, that would have worked without the mist and then just let the fact the fact that the, the mist was there to elevate it to another level and um, having spent probably about 20 minutes frantically looking round worrying about the fact that the mist could go at any minute because this thing was drifting in and out all the time we were there um, I managed to settle on this lovely composition of a single tree so I'll pass you back to location now and I will see you in just a second so I just got up bright and early this morning, walked through the woods and come out into the open, open pass and would you get a load of that? So hopefully you can see on the video, um, just move that up a little bit, we've got some lovely conditions round about and I have admittedly been running around like an absolute nutter trying to find a composition. It's the trouble with these conditions is that you can't always go to where you'd like to go necessarily and where I'd like to go was in the woods this morning but the the misty conditions are out on this open area of heathland here so I've been chasing around looking for a composition and I have arrived at one I'll just spin the camera around so here you can see all those lovely webs on the ground and uh, it's this tree here that I'm interested in um, now I don't know whether you can see it's got an open area at its base and it's got surrounded by these lovely creeping willows and if I can show you on the back of my camera I've got my, my cheap old gizmo on because I haven't got the panoramic crop in my camera and I've done a lovely panel of it and just clipped off the top of the tree because obviously it's breaking the skyline and I don't want that in my shot so I've managed to do that with that so I can frame it up but obviously the the actual full frame shot has the top of the sky in so it just enables me to to really work out what it is I'm trying to see and arrange the composition but I've been very careful about giving the the right distances between the tree base and the edges of the willows I wish there was more webs on the ground but you know you get what you get there are some in the willows at the back that the camera will pick up nicely but the tree has got such a lovely shape i'll just um try and move forward a little bit you see that there that's the composition roughly that i'm going for but without the uh, tops of the trees obviously but uh, really beautiful in terms of my settings, I'll just take that off so you can see them. 100 ISO, F19, and a quarter of a second. Really pleased with that. I'm quite relieved that I've found something. I'm going to take an alternative view of this tree now before I move on. But um, that may well be the last of the shots you see from this location. So that's one happy photographer at last um, yeah it's been a right old run around as this one but uh, got the result in the end so I'll put that on now Thank you. 
Right, so I've got myself uh, on another composition. It's exactly the same tree, but it's a slight variation of the original theme. Um, I'm going to put the camera around now and just point out um, the things that I like and the things that I don't like. I think there's always compromises to be made. It's certainly the case with my photography. I can never find anything that's, or rarely find anything that's absolutely perfect. So just swing this round now. Right, so the composition I've gone for, I'm showing you on the video camera first, but I think it's probably best seen on the back of the camera. But um, the compromise is this tree here, which I had separation with the last time. This time it's actually clipping in with this tree, but in order to get all the foreground elements where I want them to be, I have to move left. If I move right, I lose the things that I want in the frame. And the things that I really want in the frame are these group of willows just here on the left. Um, they sort of help to create some foreground interest and fill a bit of dead space that's otherwise on the left. And the reason I've, I've moved to the left is because this time I only want to show half the tree and not the full tree. And I just want to show those lovely branches just, just sort of feathering in into the shot on the right. So on the back of the camera, hopefully you can see that. Now I'm going to put my, my little cover over so that you can see exactly what I'm shooting. If I put that on there now, you can see that I've got the tree extremely off to the left hand side and those branches just feathering in, in nicely. Now I'm just going to come off camera for a second while I take two shots because the conditions are really lovely right now. In fact, no, I'll leave you on. What I'm going to do is a little focus stack. So I'm going to make sure I'm nicely focused on the tree there and take that one. And these willows that's in this foreground here are really quite close, close to the camera. So I'm going to do I'm going to move the focusing point around and I'm going to come to those willows and I'm just going to focus those in as well just to create that stack of two shots that's beautiful beautiful stunning light that we've got there at the moment really really pleased with that you just see the sun is coming through the trees creating a beautiful backlighting and just capturing all those spiders webs so that's an absolute stunning shot. I think the conditions now are better than they were for the first shot so I'm going to quickly grab a couple more but I will put that shot on now. This, just before I forget the, um, the settings are exactly the same as last time. So let me know in the comments below which of those two images you prefer. Now what I will say is that the one that was taken um, first of all was taken when the light was much cooler so the colour temperature of the light was, was far bluer than the second one. The second one was taken just literally as the sun was about to come over the horizon so it's got a lot more warmth about it. I deliberately didn't adjust that in, in, in Photoshop and Lightroom. I wanted to keep the two uh, as natural as, as, I, as I could do. For me, the first one still edges it, but certainly let me know in the comments below which of those you, you, you prefer. Now, I'll put all the images on as always at the end, but as always, um, give the video a nice big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you want to support the channel, there's Patreon and also YouTube membership, and you can join those for as little as 99 pence per month. So I will say thank you all ever so much for watching. I will see you in the next time when I'm in Scotland. Um, I'm there for two weeks. I'm looking forward to that. My next couple of videos, at least two videos, will be from there. So until then, I will see you all soon. Bye for now.